Good morning. Uh, my name is Rumi Nakvi. I'm the director of micro, uh, Microelectronics Research Lab at, at Usman Institute of Technology, Karachi, Pakistan. Our lab is focused on uh, system on chip design, uh, basically. And we are looking at RISC-V ISA-based cores. And as such, uh, we looked at rocket chip and that was a natural starting place. So our first idea was to look at this uh, rocket chip in a great detail and essentially do a reverse engineering of this chip. And my talk essentially would uh, basically give you an overview of the rocket chip and uh, basically present the software architecture. And by the end of the talk, one should be familiar with, uh, get uh, some level of familiarity with rocket chip and how it's constructed, how to configure it, and uh, so on and so forth. So let's get to the outline. Basically, as I said, uh, we will explain our motivation and goals a little bit, why we, we are looking at rocket chip, present a basic overview of the rocket chip generator, then look at deconstructing the architecture of the rocket chip generator, right? And then what we decided to do is put it all together in a micro architecture and software specification document. Uh, and uh, then we, what we are calling the, our own Agas chip SOC framework or generator, right? Which Agas is a word in Urdu, which means a new beginning. So we will show you how you can configure a new SOC, which we are calling Agas, and then what were uh, basically the summary and future directions of our research. Uh, so the motivations and goals, right? We were, when we started, this effort one and a half years ago. The idea was that we want and SOC system on chip design is relatively new in Pakistan and where is, there is a low level of skill set available, right? So we wanted to be have the ability to have a robust SOC generator framework for uh, for developing customized SOCs, right? So we said, look, how do we go about doing that? And obviously we ran into rocket chips and so we said, we'll look at that. And then the idea was that we wanted to demonstrate our indigenous methodology that we used to reverse engineer, uh, reverse engineer the rocket chip as, right? And uh, and basically then uh, the other idea was to present an overview of the market micro architecture and uh, software specification document and obviously then use it to basically uh, uh, in conjunction with the rocket chip generator, uh, generator to essentially create the Agas SOC, right? Essentially a new beginning. Uh, let's move on to the next foil. So this, I will start with the rocket chip SOC generator, right? A brief overview of it. So the the beauty of the rocket chip overview generate, uh, uh, sorry, the beauty of the rocket chip generator is that it's a collection of SOC building blocks. They are highly parameterized with the standard interfaces. Hence, you can plug and play them, connect them together, and create a big system, right? The other thing is they have, they have been implemented in Chisel, which is an open source hardware construction language embedded in Scala, which is a function language. So, so it's a very software oriented kind of a project. And on top of it, uh, what you do is you use for RTL to, uh, to actually take that uh, Chisel and convert it into Verilog, I mean Verilog. The basic features of the generator are it, it, has, it, uh, it has cores in it. It's a, it has an out, uh, in order core five stage which is the rocket core. I'll talk a little bit more about it in the next foil. Then there is an outer water core also, which is uh, referred to as boom. Then there are, then, then, then you one could form, form core tiles with it, which where you could have your L1 caches, custom accelerators, a floating point unit, and I have it twice here, but anyway, that's an error. And on top of it, you can, there is a tile link fabric that is there and which enables you to integrate uh, coherent caches. And then there is some limited support of peripherals like GPIOs and UARTs and stuff like that. That's where it's a little bit lacking, but uh, we'll go from there. Uh, Next word. So this basically presents the basic architecture of the rocket core. We, is, uh, we are initially focused on this core. It's a five stage in order scalar core generator, right? So it has the basic uh, five stage pipeline. It has a, a new program counter generator, a fetch unit, a decode unit, and an execution unit. What we have done with this block diagram here is shown the different blocks that are in each stage. Right, and uh, and essentially what we are trying to do is correlate the blocks to the actual uh, uh, actual software that was, or the actual scalar code or chisel code that was used to model that. So I will briefly walk through the the basic blocks here. 
Again, the next few files are meant to be just an introduction, all right, to a person who's looking at this for the first time. So I'm not going to read every single line from here, but the idea is that the the, the new PC generator, the new program counter generator module consists of the, uh, the page table walker, right, which is programmable. You can change the number of TLB entries in here using parameters, right? And uh, then you have the priority encoder, which looks at the, the multiple, uh, multiple PC addresses that are being generated and basically choose from it. Then there is the exception program counter which generates the PC address for the exceptions. And then there's the new program counter essentially, which is nothing but a plus four of the current address, right? So these are the basic building blocks on the uh, NPC gen. And then if you go to the next file, uh, similarly the fetch module, it has an iCache, a branch target buffer, a translation local side buffer. Uh, right and again all these blo blocks are configurable there's a branch predictor a two-bit branch predictor also so one could look at these blocks and configure them and I, we will talk in detail how to configure them uh, right nothing more here and then the base uh, then the other basic block after fetch obviously is the decode block it has the ins it has a register file which implements basically the full set of registers that one is interested in uh, basically mapping to the RISC-V ISA. So you could have either a 32-bit set of registers or a 64-bit set of registers. Again, that depends on the excellent parameter. Then there's an instruction buffer. There's an implementation of the RISC-V compressed or C extension, which is 16 bits, right? Which ensures that you could get highly compact code. Uh, you have the immediate generation block, the instruction decode, the scoreboard to ensure that you are looking at data hazards and resource hazards the basic set of uh, CSR registers or control and status registers and breakpoint. So again, the idea of representing the block diagram here was to show you the different blocks that are implemented in terms of their hierarchy and the actual scalar files associated with them also, right? Uh, Next while uh, you have the, multi the multiplier and the ALU, right? The, uh, the Again, both these modules can be parameterized uh, depending on the excellent, excellent parameter. It could be either 32-bit multiplier or a 64-bit multiplier. Similarly, the ALU is also controlled by the excellent parameter and it could be 32 or 64-bit. Uh, next. And then you have the memory or the write back. You have the uh, data caches implemented in there and the atomic, uh, basically the atomic module for uh, ALU, right? So which use the atomics, there's a scratch pad, uh, RAM implemented for high speed uh, uh, data accesses to improve your efficiencies in terms, of, in terms of data retrieval. So this is a basic overview of the five stage uh, uh, blocks that are used for the rocket core, right? We, we are initially focused on this core Next, what I will do is essentially, uh, basically, yeah, so this just completes the block diagram here. Next, what I'll do is the uh, since, as I said initially in the talk, right? Since the idea behind the uh, this whole construction of the risk five or I mean, the construction of the rocket chip was essentially that it's based on uh, highly abstract software or high level software compared to Verilog or system Verilog right, comparatively. So I think the next thing we will discuss is how did we deconstruct the software architecture of the rocket chip, right? So let's go to the next one. Basically when, once, when one looks at the code of the rocket chip, I'm just trying to, so it's a very expansive code, a lot of lines and uh, a lot of files, a lot of directories and a lot of lines, right? So. You could be looking at 372 files, 73 directories, and once you actually build something, it explodes to many, many more directories and many, many more for files. For example, 10K directories and 180K, 185K uh, files. And this is from one of these papers that we are referring uh, in the bottom. Again, the idea is that it's an expansive uh, set of uh, software implemented uh, in, a, in, a, in thousands of lines of hundreds and thousands of lines of code. And then there is no documentation for it, essentially uh, in either externally or in the code itself. And, uh, and, and the code is not very well uh, documented or the, um, uh, the variables are not very meaningful. So it's rather, uh, very difficult to look at the code and try to understand the functionality, right? 
So this rate makes it very difficult to take the rocket chip core, uh, the rocket chip generator essentially, and basically augment it further uh, or enhance its capabilities, right? So what we decided to do when we faced this problem is, what, what uh, the idea behind uh, our uh, approach was that we will take uh, basically software uh, undergraduate uh, CS students and we would essentially who know the basics of object oriented programming and high level functional programming concepts and then use and then use them to really go through the code line by line and try to understand uh, the implementation of the code right and again so this is kind of uh, since uh, this uh, this whole uh, system is a fusion of two different uh, specialities if you will object oriented programming at one side and then on the other side the actual hardware or micro architecture or computer architecture expertise so so what we did is we took this uh, set of cs students we uh, we we assigned them the different modules and they went uh, line by line through the code of the uh, the rocket chip generator and their idea was that in the end, the objective was to be able to develop basically a software architecture, a software architecture and microarchitecture document, which we will, which we are calling the MASS of the rocket chip, basically, right? And uh, so, how did we go about doing that, right? So, we had to uh, design a methodology of going through the code and then trying to basically establish the whole software architecture. Right, so the way we did it is we we tried to study the code construction in detail. Uh, this foil is a little bit of an eye chart, but here, but any the idea is that we constructed uh, class diagrams. This uh, this implementation of the rocket chip is done in a very highly object oriented fashion. There are classes, and then the classes are related to each other. Right, so we the 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 students basically developed this class diagram to see the interrelationship between that between the different uh, different classes. And uh, here, what I'm showing here is uh, basically a, a set of class diagrams for the BTB, and then how that class diagram is related, how these classes are related to the instruction buffer, what kind of object-oriented concepts are being used in terms of aggregation, composition, or inheritance. So here you could see that the, uh, uh, here you could see that the, uh, the uh, IBUF uh, class, which is related to the BTB response class, right? And there are other relationships and that are shown by the arrows. You have the open diamond, which is showing the aggregation. The closed uh, diamond shows the composition and the arrow is inheritance, right? So these are the linkages be between different classes. Again, I'm not going to walk through the different linkages, but the idea was to show you this that uh, that this is the level of detail that we have gone into in terms of analyzing the code right and this level of detail is documented in the mass document next foil let's go to the next one come on okay so here i uh, uh, basically I'm, I'm walking through a little bit more detail in terms of uh, in terms of the uh, in terms of the two cl class relationships, right? As I said earlier, the BTP response class and the instruction bus class, there are two classes here, just basically uh, for an overview for people who are not that familiar with the classes and uh, methods and variables, right? The pluses here indicate that these are all public attributes or of the classes. And then on the bottom, you have the basic public methods of the uh, IBUS class and then the IBUS class is basically getting uh, aggregated with the BTB response class, right? And then the BTB response class essentially uh, is inheriting its uh, uh, its methods from its uh, parent class, which is BTB bundle. So I, this shows the relationship between the different classes that are created and how they are related and how they can be basically parameterized, right? So anyway, let's move to the next foil. So I think then in the next slide, we are going to in, in, into the details of what uh, object-oriented concepts or fundamentals that were used in the rocket chip. I'll just click through it quickly, right? So they basically inherent, inherently use the basic four pillars or whatever, the number of the basic features of object orientation in terms of abstraction, encapsulation, and inheritance. And uh, so you can see that they use the abstract keyword and were, were basically using the abstract 
uh, trade for decode constant. Similarly, they were using the private access modifier, right, to make sure that certain uh, modifiers are private and they are uh, encapsulated or hidden, right? In, uh, and then you see inheritance in the PMP and PMP reg classes and polymorphism also, right? So the idea is that this is a fully object-oriented code in, in that sense of the rocket ship. So you need to really get into the details and that's why constructing of the class diagrams and basically looking at these relationships between different classes really helped us understand the, uh, the code uh, much better. Uh, let's get to the next foil. So now once we uh, created all these class diagrams and uh, and uh, uh, right, so we were now able to put the whole thing together. And the idea was once you have deconstructed the software architecture, uh, right, then you can take the soft architecture and marry it with the hardware or the micro architecture. And that's where the MAS or micro architecture specification document comes in together. Right, so we put it all together. So in this case, the additional feature that we added in here is that uh, again to to expedite or to make going through the code easier uh, the we constructed flow diagrams right and the idea behind the flow charts or flow diagrams was that you could have a visual picture of the code so one could look at the flow diagram and get a visual picture of the code very quickly so if you can see on the left there is a visual picture of this code uh, which is shown on the right. This is a class where you're defining a register file, right? It is initiated with three parameters. It has a memory function in it. It has multiple access method in it, uh, which are private, for example, right? And then there's, uh, and for example, the access method reads, scan reads are two access methods in it, which are private. And then, uh, uh, and right, so I think that's the basic idea. So this gives you a basic software view of the register file, right? How it is defined, what are the access methods? And then on the left, you can see the flow chart, right? You start and you get into the register file. It shows you what are the parameters, then it goes into a basic, uh, uh, the memory instantiation, right? And we on, on the right of the flow chart, I, uh, let me do this again. On the right of the flow chart, it shows you that this is a memory. So this variable is basically creating a memory. Then this is an access, which access method, which takes address as a parameter. And then the, this is how the address is computed, right? So, the, uh, so on and so forth. So this flow chart really makes uh, the uh, reading the code much more uh, easier, right? So you could follow the, uh, the code actually or look at the flowchart, right? And and that's how one could create the linkages between different portions of the code. Uh, let's get to the next file. And here what we did, once you had created that uh, flow diagram and flowchart of the class reg file, then this is where we are getting into more of a hardware view of the register file. Now you think about the register file as, as a hardware block and as such we created a block diagram view which is very common in microarchitecture specifications, right? You have, a, you have a block diagram view which shows you what are the inputs, what are the outputs. So that's, this is where we are explaining the inputs. Look, look this has the, this, uh, this register file could have, uh, the word bits could be either 32 bits or 64 bits, which is controlled by XLAN. Then, then there's an address, which is five bits, right? It could have a set of 32 registers. Then there's a data bus coming in, which could be 32 bits or 64 bits. And then it has a, read data bus out. So again, I, the idea was that now you are looking at from the software class to the hardware block diagram, right? That was the transposition or transformation we were trying to make to make it easy for us to understand both the software architecture and the hardware. I have another example of uh, how we looked at the code, right? So this, we are now looking, we're look, doing a deep dive, in, a deep dive into the ALU code. Again, this is the ALU code. It defines the object ALU first, then it goes through a definition of the different functions that are implemented in the ALU, like adder, subtractor, XOR, shift right, shift right, or and right. So there are a bunch of ALU operations that are defined, right? And then if you look at the the beginning of the code, for example, it defines the different packages that are being imported, right? And on the right, we, uh, we uh, on the right it shows the class that has been that has been defined, right? And then we go into a little bit of de detail into how a particular operation of the ALU is performed in terms of the software. So this gives this deep dive basically gives you a full uh, kind of a, an overview of how the code structure of the ALU, right? And again, there are multiple blocks. Some are more complex than this, but this is an example. And I mean, we have more details in the other 
blocks uh, to uh, right. Let's get to the next file. Here again, the same ALU code. Now what we are do doing is giving you the uh, flow diagram view of the code, right? So we are looking at this operation where you're doing an addition or a subtraction. So you have the code on the top, the flow diagram on the right, which tells you what, what is happening. You have an IO bundle, you have this, uh, you define the actual function, you define the data word, you, you have the two operands in one and in two, the output, and then uh, you have the actual function that is happening in the code, right? So this is the mechanism of explaining the code essentially, right? In terms of a flow diagram, I think I don't have much to add here. Let's get to the next view. And again, this is where uh, we put the whole thing together, right? In terms of the, uh, let me click through this quickly. So here we put to the, uh, the, the whole thing together from the class diagram to the block diagram, right? looking at the classes its description and how it is related to the to the actual block diagram and uh, so this so the block diagram gives you a hardware view of the alu that you what kind of operands you have uh, basically you are getting this alu op bit which is four bit which tells you what the function of this is then what is what is the data width the operands the outputs right there are three kinds of outputs uh, adder out, comp out, and so on and so forth, right? Again, I wouldn't, uh, I mean, that this is basically self-explanatory. Uh, nothing else to, to go here. And then how did we put all this together? So what we are doing is the, basically we have created this micro architecture and software specification document. And uh, essentially we took this document now and uh, our contention is that this document is really, is as an invaluable resource for people who have the basics in terms of who understand Scala, Chisel, and the SOC hardware. Uh, the, the document itself offers a, a detailed knowledge of the rocket core building blocks in terms of the block diagrams, class diagrams, flow diagrams, and then uh, uh, creating the correlation between them, right? And hence, you, one can use this uh, document to actually basically reverse engineer uh, the uh, the uh, or improve your understanding of the rocket ship and right and use it to configure your own systems or frameworks uh, so what we did is we didn't only want to kind of create a document only right so from creating a methodology we started creating our own soc which we are calling agaz as i said earlier agaz is an urdu word which means beginning and as i i guess i stated earlier also in fact, this is the true beginning in Pakistan, uh, and uh, for this is one of its. Uh, uh, I think this is one of the few efforts in, in Pakistan that we are doing in terms of trying to design a system on chip from scratch, uh, natively indigenously, right? So that's why the name comes in, and the, this name was suggested by the students, and they were very passionate about it. So I just want to mention that again. Anyway. So what we did is we said, okay, we will agree on a certain specification for the Agha's SOC first, right? We'll go with the 32-bit uh, uh, RISC V extension, IM and C, 64 kilobytes of instruction in data cache, core local interrupt controller, peripheral local interrupt controller, and a privileged machine, right? With that, the, with that specification defined, the idea would be that we will show you how to configure the Agha's the Agha's SOC and core, right? So the first step is you have to create an Agha's core class with the requisite configuration information that I shared before. And then you take that uh, core class in the system configuration uh, and uh, right add it there. So again, this the next few files basically walk through the steps what, of what we did. We created the Aga score, the uh, class, basically the rocket chip. It has uh, three sets of parameters, the Aga score parameters, the data cache parameters, and the instruction cache parameters. The details are in there. And from there, the basic, there are certain set of default parameters that are already there. So the uh, the comp compressed or the C extension is true by default there. So that's how we are using that. And the base extension, the int integer extension is supported by default in rocket chip. So that is already there. So we'll get, so we did not have to configure that basically. Anyway, this walk, this file walks through the actual configuration and what are the different parameters, what they mean. Uh, uh, again, I think one of the interesting ones is the mul unroll, which tells you how many cycles uh, it takes for multiplication to complete, right? And uh, and so on and so forth. You could enable an FPU or not, depending on which extension you're supporting for your core. We were only supporting the RV32M, so we did not enable an FPU here. Uh, yep. Again, then uh, this goes through and uh, uh, explains the two other 
configuration uh, components that we had, the data cache and the iCache, the number of bits, the number of ways, the number of sets that we had, and the actual calculation to calculate the full uh, size of the data cache. We were using the 64 kilobyte data cache and a 64 kilobyte instruction cache, right? So, I mean, this tells you what the different parameters mean and how they are actually configured. Then you go back and these are, for us, the basic cores of AGAs were multiplied, the compressed unit and the immediate generation. So it's RB32 IMC. Uh, again, as I said, let's get to the next one. And uh, again, since we, uh, this file essentially shows you that we have gone through and documented the detailed set of uh, parameters, right? That are being used in there and they are in the MAS and one can look at it and obviously use other parameters for different configuration. Uh, uh, scenarios. Next, uh, basically, is uh, it's the creation of the rocket tile. So we had the core with the branch target buffer, the L1 cache, and data caches, right? So this just is the visual of the our rock, our tile, or the rocket tile that we are using, or the Aga tile, if you will. Right now, once you have uh, uh, configured the core with the correct configuration, the caches and the data cache, then you go back and actually add that configuration to the uh, to the uh, system level. So this basically walks through how you add it in there, right? You are extending the class essentially and adding the uh, Agas core object as a parameter there. And you define, if you look at it, we have added the Agas core object in there with, and we are only using, we only have a single core. So that's why it's a single core there. So I'll just, since I'm running out of time, I'll walk through quickly to the next file. Uh, let's see. And this again tells you the de detail in terms of customization of the fact that we were using the 32-bit configuration. So this is already defined in there, but you just need to extend your class to to get uh, uh, get connected with the RV32 configuration, right? So that's what we did here, and that's basically the uh, that's how we built built the Agas SOC. We did try to uh, basically. Uh, uh, configure it and it was ready to build. At this point, we are now trying to validate it and take it to the next step. Uh, let's go to the last file. So our what is our summary and future directions? I mean, I just presented an overview of the methodology we use to reverse engineer a rocket chip. You have created an uh, MASS document. We have used this to configure an AGAS SOC. We will continue to reverse engineering of our effort to cover the diplomacy part of it. And eventually our idea is to enhance this basic rocket chip framework to include IO and peripherals, basically IO peripherals and the ability to build, build a full SOC, which is ready for uh, basically this new flow that we want to define, which we are calling the chis chisel to GDS flow, right? So that the new uh, generator that we will have, which, will be, which we are calling the AGAS SOC generator, it will give you the chisel and it will be able to go from chisel to GDS through the fully automated process, right? That's our basic goal. Uh, and I think this is the end of my presentation. I would like to thank my uh, my students, uh, my faculty member, uh, Dr. Ali and uh, Farhan Ahmed. He was the software team lead. He's the faculty at ASU and our researcher, uh, Ozair Khan and the rest of the students that were involved in it. Uh, we have approximately six to 12 students there, and these are their pictures. They have done a remarkable job of going through the code line by line and constructing this whole uh, thing. And uh, that's the end of my presentation.